Hey Doodles, Virtual Mrs. Hagen here, and in this video I am going to teach you a little bit about painting techniques. If you are following along with me on this one, you are going to need some paint brushes, some paint, something to put paint on for this, uh, since I'm only using a little bit of paint, I'm using just a folded over piece of paper but you could use a paper plate, a piece of newspaper, just something to put paint on. And then of course, something to hold water in, which I have way off to the side here, away from my camera, because as I have told you friends before, electronics and water are not friends, so keep them separated. Like most of the media we use, the names of the different techniques kind of tell you what they are. Um, for example, Filling in is exactly what it sounds like. It's when you make a shape and you fill it in. Mixing is also exactly what it sounds like. That's when you have your two different colors or three or four or however many and you take and mix together the two colors before you paint with them. And we know that yellow and blue together make green, but if I were to mix in other colors, that would change it up as well. It's kind of a foamy green because I have a very light yellow, very bright blue. There's also blending. And blending is very similar to mixing, but instead of making it on my palette and then painting with it, with blending, I do it on the paper. And what that does is it allows me to show off all of the colors that I'm using. So when I blend it, I'm still going to see my original colors and the color I'm trying to make. And it just gives a little bit more texture to my paint. Some artists like to do a lot of blending. Some artists only do mixing. It just depends on your own personal style. Another technique for painting is called lines and they are exactly what they sound like. That's when you take your paintbrush and you paint lines. Okay, they can be zigzaggy, they can be wiggly, they can be straight. It's just whatever type of line you want to make. Similarly, are dots. Now I'm going to switch paint brushes for dots here because big, wide paint brushes do not make very good dots. Round paint brushes do. And it's, again, literally exactly what it sounds like. It's you are just taking your paintbrush and you're making dots with it. Dabs are similar but instead of keeping my paintbrush up so it makes a solid circle, I kind of tilt it on its side and I dab it. And this is actually kind of fun to make texture on something with. I actually do some blending with my dabbing, which can be, like I said, quite a bit of fun. There is also the swirl technique where you take your paint and you swirl it onto the paper. Another one that you can do blending with. Basically every single technique in painting you can blend. This type of blending is just filling in in a blended shape. If I had had a shape around this and filled it in much more neatly than I did, I could have done blending to fill in. Dry brushing is an interesting technique where you have very, very little paint on your brush. So if you had a big daub of paint, you would brush some of it off onto your palette or onto another like working space. And then you just use gentle strokes and it creates this kind of scruffly texture, which is fun. Sometimes, when you're using paint, you're going to use a wet on wet technique of blending where the paint is wet 
and then you're putting it on top and you want to mix the colors together. But sometimes you want the paint that you're putting down things on to be dry because you don't want the paint to blend. And this is called wet on dry, which just means I'm taking wet paint and I'm putting it on top of a dry surface. And outlining is again similar. It's just you're outlining a shape that you've already made, but you want that shape to be dry so that it doesn't blend. You can also water down your paint or make a wet surface to paint upon. And what that does is it really lightens the color that you're using and keeps it spreading into just that little pocket that you've made. You can also use watered down paint to create a highlight, kind of like you would with crayons using pressure. So if I want this to be darker and this end to be lighter, instead of going back in and getting more paint, I can just get water and I can spread out that paint. And that creates two different tones of the same hue. So I've got my darker and then my lighter because of the water I used. And then the last two techniques I want to show you are a little bit more advanced than what we usually use in the art room. I've got some paint on my brush, so I'm going to clean it off with a tissue. One of them is called engraving, and that is when you use the back of your paintbrush as well as the front. I'm going to get some, get some paint here. And what you do with that is you fill in the space, and then you flip over your paintbrush and you use the back to engrave images into it. You have to do this while your paint is still wet or it won't work. And then of course you'll need to clean off your paintbrush. The other one is loading two colors on your brush at the same time. So you can load half of a brush with one color. And you guys will notice I flipped back to my bigger brush because this is much easier to do with bigger brushes. And a half with another color. And then when you paint, you end up with these two-toned lines. Which is kind of special. These techniques can be used for any type of painting really that you want to do. Um, So this paint acts a lot like the tempera paint that we use at school, even though it is more of a, a craft paint. And paint that's thick like this and that isn't watercolors are really good for these techniques. Watercolors have their own separate set of techniques that maybe we'll look at another day. But using these techniques, again, you can use these for anything. Your basics are going to be you're filling it in and then painting on top for details, mixing colors, and then blending colors together. But everything that you do to do these, you also kind of need lines for because you have to be able to make your line and the paint to paint it in. Dots are going to be used to add any sort of detail that is a dot. Dabs are going to be used to add any sort of detail or texture that you want to have that sort of look to. Same thing with your, your squirrels here. It's anything that you want to have this sort of brush texture with that you would add this for. Dry brushing, I personally use a lot for making stone and making clouds, but that does not mean those are the only things you can use it for. Making the surface wet is not actually a technique that I personally use a lot. Um, it's just not a preferred one for me, 
but I know artists that use it to keep paint in a certain spot on their paper. I also know mostly um, watercolor artists like to use this technique to keep their paint in one pool. The technique of pulling color down, I use a lot when I have an area where I wanna show strong emphasis and then I want the rest of it to kind of fade out. There are other things that you can use it for. Um, just looking at this, if I turn to this sideways, it kind of looks like the moon and then maybe that's how the moonlight's coming out. This is a great way to add texture to things. And this technique is great for making things that have two tones that you wanna to keep together. I've seen a lot of artists use this to make flowers and leaves and that sort of thing, but you could probably also use it to make maybe flowing clothing or lots of other wonderful things on your picture.